Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at some more standard shakeup with a deck called White Steel, which is a mono white artifact based aggro deck and one of the main payoffs of course is steel overseer to mana for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature and we can tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on each artifact creature we control including the overseer itself so this can very quickly get out of hand if we can untap with it then some more nice payoffs for the deck are these kind of two for one artifact creatures we've got the clockwork servant which is a three mana two three in this deck that when it enters the battlefield draws a card and the arcanist owl which is a four mana three three flyer that when it enters the battlefield gets to look at the top four cards of our library reveal an artifact or enchantment and put it into our hand so both of these artifact creatures replace themselves when they enter the battlefield to make sure we keep drawing more action and then another payoff for playing all these artifacts and enchantments is All That Glitters, an aura that enchants one of our creatures, giving it plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. And our deck is full of artifacts and enchantments, so this can add a lot of damage out of nowhere. And then looking at the rest of the deck, we do need a critical mass of artifacts to make our Steel Overseer worth it. So we do have some typically weaker one-drops in the Inquisitive Puppet and Ginger Brute. But because we have all these uh, artifact synergies, they're still worth the inclusion. Ginger Brute, a 1 mana 1 1 with haste, that uh, potentially can be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. So, also a great recipient for all that glitters, as it can potentially deal unblockable damage. And then we also have the full playset of Inquisitive Puppet, which is a 1 mana 0 2. When it enters the battlefield, lets us scry 1, so it can help us find those key cards in the deck. And we can also exile it to create a 1 1 white human creature token. So this is a bit of a weird one. Sometimes we're happy to just keep the puppet in play and pump it up with uh, cards like the Steel Overseer. Other times we just want to sacrifice it right away to turn it into a 1-1 creature. So we get the benefit from the Scry and then we can start chipping in with a human token for some damage. So a bit of a weird card, but it can potentially help us chum block a large creature from the opponent. And then we can still sacrifice it and get our 1-1 token out of the deal. Also works quite well with Mystic Forge, which we will get to in a second. So not a great card, but it does help us fill the gap at 1 mana. And then we also have the full playset of Stone Coil Serpent, which we could potentially play for 1 mana. But more often than not, we will save this until the late game, where we can play a nice big serpent. And all the abilities on Stone Coil Serpent are actually quite relevant. Reach means we can deal with opposing flyers. Trample means that if we do put in all that glitters on it, for example, it can't easily be chum blocked. And protection from multicolor protects it from a lot of different removal spells. And also means it can be blocked by opposing multicolor creatures. So the Stone Coil definitely delivers. Then at 2 mana we've got our Steel Overseer, we have all that glitters, as well as the full playset of a Glass Casket as a nice removal spell, exiling an opposing creature with convert mana costs 3 or less, and it also counts as an artifact that we can find with the Owl, it helps us pump up all that glitters, and it also can be cast off a Mystic Forge from the top of our library. So pretty useful card, even against control decks that don't typically play targets for Glass Casket, we can still run it out there as just a 2 mana artifact that uh, sits in play and helps us add one more power with all that glitters. So it's never a completely dead card, but of course much better against opposing creature decks. Then we've got our Clockwork Servants, two copies of Prison Realm to complement our Glass Caskets as removal, can still be found with the Arcanus Owl, and still counts as an enchantment for all that glitters, so still quite synergistic in our deck. The only downside is that we can't play it with Mystic Forge. And then we also have two copies of Gideon Blackblade, since we are a white aggressive deck, so it fits in quite nicely, especially nice against opposing control decks that will have a hard time removing it. And then we'll beat down as a 4-4 creature, can give our creatures various abilities, lifelink especially nice when we're in a racing situation, and can also maybe minus 6 after a couple turns to exile target to non-land permanent, so also doubles up as removal. And then finally we have our 4 copies of Arcanus Owl, and 2 copies of Mystic Forge, which is the main card or engine in the deck. We can look at the top card of our library at any time, and cast the top card if it's an artifact, or a colorless non-land card but uh, in this deck only artifacts matter, so we can cast every non-land card except for the enchantments and or Gideon. And then we can also tap the Mystic Forge, pay one life and exile the top card of our library if we don't like it, if it's maybe a land or something we can't cast. So the Mystic Forge can provide a steady stream of additional artifacts of the top of our deck. And then of course our Serpent, which we can also play in the late game. And then our mana base, very simple, can only play white mana since we have the Arcanus Owl and the Clockwork Servant, so we don't get to fit in any colorless lands, but 18 planes and then the full playset of Castle Ardenvale as another mana sink. 
So yeah, that's our Mono White Artifact Aggro deck. Maybe not quite powerful enough for normal standard, but uh, definitely a pretty fun deck to try out in the standard shakeup event. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, so Temple of Malady, we've got a pretty good start here. Especially if we can draw some lands for Gideon and Forge. Crawl Harpooner, sure. Tempted to just play Stone Quail for two here and then next turn we can maybe casket the Harpooner. There's probably reasons not to tap Overseer right away, but this way we can pass priority. Ooh, Knight of Autumn takes out Overseer, sadly. Is it Gideon time? I guess it is. Don't really want to attack, maybe I can give this Vigilance, but then it just trade for the Knight of Autumn. We can banish evil from this plane. Yeah, I didn't think we want to be attacking, I just want to protect this Gideon so we can attack with it next turn. So... I guess I could attack here. And if they trade, that's fine. So, don't know exactly what deck they're playing. It looks like maybe just abs on midrange. Harpooner seems okay in this format since the blue white flyer deck is so popular. On the one hand, we don't want to trade because we have all that glitters, but on the other hand, we've got Mystic Forge to pull ahead with cards, so... I'm okay keeping my Gideon safe. Alright. So, if they have a land, they could adapt and attack with this. If they don't, then I'm better off casketing the Harpooner. Could also just play the Mystic Forge right now, but... And even if they do adapt Incubation Druid and attack, that's their entire turn. We still have a Gideon. I guess they can get back Knight of Autumn. It's pretty good. Probably see a jump from knights. Yeah, we'll wait. I guess I can ultimate Gideon to kill Liliana. Attack Soren first and I can chum block with the zombie and draw cards. Not even sure if that's worth it.
They can minus to get the Knight of Autumn back once again, sadly. Would love to get the Mystic Forge going, but kind of need to pressure these Planeswalkers. And yeah, it's true that I guess Serpent uh, can be targeted by the Knight of Autumn. So, yeah, sure. Right, so their plan is probably to just adapt Incubation Druids, is my guess. So this is a good turn to go Servant plus Glitters. Don't need to fear a Murderous Rider killing my Serpent at least. Could have something else. Let's turn down. Could see a second Liliana be pretty effective here. They could also be playing Commander Dreadhorde. Can take out Serpent, takes out uh, Glitters instead. Yeah, it's a lot of Coral Harpooners. I guess we cast get the druid now. And they can double block serpent, so it's a good attack. And I guess servant as well. Good synergy between Puppets and uh, Mystic Forge. Could exile the top card, but I think we're okay drawing Prison Realm. And then... Yeah, I guess we can attack. They can trade Harpooner for the 3-3 Serpent, so maybe keep that one back. And just hit for 4. Kills a forge, that's rude. But I guess now they're dead. I guess it depends. Because we could Prison Realm the Harpooner hit them for 7. But they might attack just to gain a bit of life. Alright, that saves them I guess. Or does it? I guess not. Still depends whether they attack or not. I can deny the life gain by sacking the puppets. Probably do it like this. This way they gain three. Or no, never mind. The damage is prevented. So I guess they don't gain any life. And then we should kill them on the way back. All right, so a bit of a, a weird set of interactions here with the Stone Coil Serpent, but... Even uh, Triple Knight of Autumn wasn't good enough. All right, this hand needs to draw at least a, a land or two. We'll try it. 
This looks like a draft hand. Enforcer. That's kind of annoying. Serpents on White Weenie. Banner, that's kind of the payoff alongside Loxodon. Ooh, unbreakable. Alright, that's a lot of damage. So do I take 10 or do I jump preventing 3? I can probably take 10. I land is great. Mm, both of these are quite good. Probably go with the casket still. Giant killer could tap down my owl, and I could take quite a bit of damage, but then next turn we can double casket. So I guess this is fine. Taking seven down to one. I could kill the land instead. Because then I can casket the giant killer and the Pegasus can't attack alone. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Alright, it's time to casket and... Don't even have to get rid of the Pegasus, don't think they have any haste creatures that we need to be worried about. So the Pegasus can't attack or block alone. But we can most definitely attack. Alright. Maybe the opponent should have last turn instead of attacking with all, just use Giant Killer to tap down my flyer and just attack with her flyers. Taran Scorn. This figure. I guess they're just gonna blast on my Gideon. So for now... I guess we don't want to play the, any additional threes. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'll keep a land. Alright, I guess not. At least now they can't blast on my Gideon. Yeah, still tempted not to play the Servant here. Last zone on three. I guess I'll bottom it now. At this point, cards we want to draw Mystic Forge and Arcanus Owl, which are both four mana, but don't know if I want to keep lands when we don't have those. This is non-land permanence, so can't get rid of anything. I guess a one life doesn't matter here. We'll just attack, and if they do somehow have like a flash creature, I could still minus six. Sure. I mean, I guess I can play Servant just to draw cards, or I can do nothing. I'm okay if this gets countered. Alright, Casket not great here. Opponent kind of got gideon here. So I can put them to one. And now they're dead. This sounds pretty underwhelming. Try another one. Maybe the Prisoner Realm. Just keep the artifacts to go with the Overseer. There's an argument for playing a Serpent turn 1, but might just play turn 3 instead. Alright, so we're taking quite a bit of damage, but then hopefully Overseer can stabilize and take over. Alright, so another White Weenie deck. Yeah, looks like they... might, uh... Be a little bit too fast in this game.
guess we'll play Owl here. It's kind of close with another Serpent, to be honest. Could be dead here. Another one. What they should do is attack with Enforcer and then before block or stab something. Yeah, I think they figured it out. I guess we play a Servant and then a 2-2 two -two Serpent. And then we're technically not dead. Sure. So they can tap the owl and then force me to trade off a serpent or chum block. We'll see. Tap owl and then I'll have to trade for the witness. I guess they don't have to tap the owl now. But now I could block with owl and serpents. 3, 7, and they can only trade for 1. That seems better to me. Do I just need an extra blocker here? I guess we do. Gideon can start gaining life, so that seems good. So are we dead here? They can tap down the owl, we have two reach creatures. So technically not dead. Alright, this game is proving to be pretty interesting. So now I can Gideon and all that glitters maybe on a serpent, giving it lifelink. And then they can tap it down with the enforcer. And hopefully we get enough where we don't die on the way back. Seems okay. I march into battle as your champion of justice. No, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet. Well, at the one life, couldn't be any closer. This hand has potential, but uh, if they kill my Overseer, it doesn't do much. Of course, turn 2 Overseer is kind of what our deck wants to do. And we do have a turn 3 Prisoner Realm to interact. So we'll try it. Clockwork Servant, an excellent draw. Pretty 
Priest of Forgotten Gods. That's the type of card that doesn't always look scary, but then if you let them untap, you regret it. So I might want to get rid of it. Probably still use a casket. Don't think the mana efficiency matters and we might have to get rid of something bigger. So they'll attack first. I have to take it. That one, luckily, we can Prison Realm, whereas Casket would not have worked. Hoping to scry a land to the top here, so we can next turn go Servant plus Brute and spread some counters around. I think now I might want to tap this main phase to play around this figure, giving this minus two, minus two. And it's not like I'm going to block, since they're just going to attack first anyway. So might as well. Don't expect any haste creatures that I need to block. Pretty happy if that's their entire turn. They might have a second knight, I guess. Alright, that's better. Now I guess I can wait. Rankle. Not sure if we're gonna get the chance to drop these all that glitters. Alright, another Overseer, so the dots grow to night since they dealt three and then one more from the trigger. Casket is good, so I've got a bunch of options. Definitely I think we want to casket one of the knights, and then we could glitters the Ginger Brute for instance which does hit pretty hard. And then next turn, making it unblockable plus a second glitters could be the deciding move. Let's see here, six, seven, plus three stents. I can't really afford to attack with everyone, which is a little awkward. This would grow up to a seven toughness creature, so there's no easy way to kill it in combat. So maybe, hmm, yeah, maybe I do just play Owl anyway. And then no attacks. And then the plan is probably to chum block one of the Knights of Heaven Legion. We'll see. Alright, so... Definitely block here with the Owl. And then if I block Servant on Knight, I force him to pump the one that's being blocked. Their entire turn is spent pumping the knights. Um, I take three. And can I kill them on the way back? I might be able to. Could also block with the brute, but then I don't force them to pump. I could also block with overseer. And then they only get to kill one. Maybe that's better. And then try and get them with uh, double glitters. Or maybe the casket and just play a longer game. All 
All right, so this is 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is plus 14, plus 14. So they seem that to me. Alright, so we got to see the power of uh, all that glitters in that game, kind of winning the game out of nowhere. So would I make any changes to the deck? I think I'm reasonably happy with the lists. Kind of do need that critical mass of one-drops, even though they're not super exciting, just to have more cheap artifacts to pump with the Overseer, and to have a higher number of artifacts in play when we do play all that glitters. Serpent is kind of our curve topper if we have a lot of lands in play. And then the Mystic Forge can also be a nice source of card advantage. And then a good chunk of removal too with the Caskets, the Prison Realms, and then Gideon. Excellent against control decks. The Servant and the Owl replacing themselves is pretty nice. And then also have the Castles for the late game. So yeah, overall seems like a pretty synergistic, uh, well-balanced deck. So pretty happy with it in the shakeup event. Probably a little bit too weak for the current standard environment, but we do have some promising cards in the upcoming Thero sets uh, with uh, White Devotion, because Arcanus Owl counting as for White Devotion could be the difference here. So definitely look forward to brewing some Mono White Devotion decks for the upcoming expansion. But uh, for now, this is a pretty nice one to try in the shakeup event. Alright, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.